Hello and welcome back to Kim Reads as we continue with Happy Birthday Addie, Chapter 5, Changes in the Wind. Addie was happy when she woke up on Sunday morning. Mom and Papa wouldn't have to work. It was sunny spring day and Papa would have to start his carpenter job tomorrow. After breakfast, Daddy and Mom and Papa went to church. Reverend Drake preached about being ready because a change was coming. He said the war would be over any day now, and when it was, a change would come sweeping through the country like the gusty winds of spring. Addie hoped that the reverend said might be true. After church, Addie and her parents went back to the boarding house to eat dinner with the other boarders. Then they went to Washington Square Park. Addie brought the jump rope Sarah had given her, and Mom and Papa turned it while she showed him how she could play double dutch. How in the world did you learn to jump rope so good? Papa asked with pride. Addie kept jumping as she answered. Sarah and Madeer taught me. I can understand Sarah teaching you, but how could Madeer? Mama asked. She's blind. She's blind, but she has a way of seeing things real clear. Addie said, she'd be teaching me how to see with my ears and sing with my heart. Are you kidding me? Asked Papa. You sound just like your brother. No, it's not a real old papa, Addie said. Madeira knows all about the world. She was around when, since God invented dirt. As the afternoon turned to evening, Addie and Papa and Mama headed home. When are you going to pick your birthday, Addie? Mama asked as they walked on. Your papa's got that ice cream freezer fixed and ready. I'm waiting for an almost perfect day, answered Addie. But I think it's coming soon. Well, it better hurry. Uh, I'm getting real hungry for ice cream. That night, Addie was awakened by suddenly a noise in the street. She didn't know what it was at first. Papa had already jumped up from the bed. He was looking out the window. What's all the fuss here? Mom asked sleepily. Addie was fully awake by then. She heard three big booms that rattled the panes in the window. That's cannon fire, Papa said. It's got to be coming from the harbor. Suddenly there were more booms and then popping noises. It sounded like sharks cracking through the air. Maybe the war has come to Philadelphia, said Mama with alarm. Papa started to enter. The sound of the people cheering, whistleblowing, and the church bells ringing drowned out his words. Addie. He started beating faster. All that noise and at this time of night. I bet I know what's happened, Addie thought. She jumped out of bed and joined Papa at the window. Down below, the streets was filling with people. Mama, get up, Addie urged as she turned from the window looked at Mama. I think the war is over, Addie started jumping up and down. I think Addie right, Ruth. That gotta be it, Papa said. He went over to Mama. She was crying and so was Papa. Addie went to the bed and put her arms around them. Um, don't cry, Addie said, but Addie was so happy she thought she was going to cry too. Papa and Mama dried their eyes, and Mom said, That means we got to get a chance to see Esther and Sam again. This is the day we've all been waiting for. Come on, let's get dressed and go out. I know I can't go back to sleep now. They all dressed quickly as they rushed downstairs. They met with some of the other boarders, half-dressed and talking excitedly. Addie, Papa, and Mama went outside. Someone in the crowd the street yelled, General Lee has surrendered. Another cried, The war is over. The North has won. Addie looked back in the house and saw Madeira at a window. Madeira, Addie called over the noise crowd. I wish you could see this. In my way, I can. Madeira called back. Papa took Addie's hand and led her and Mama into the street. As they joined the crowd of people, someone handed them lanterns and banners. Hundreds of people, young and old, black and white, filled the street with sidewalks. They were crying and hugging and laughing and cheering. Some were still in their night clothes. They were beating pie tins and pots and pans. One man beat a drum and another played the fiddle. Firecrackers propped up all around them. Addie looked up to see flags, red, white, red and white and blue, bunting and draped on buildings. This is just like a dream, Addie thought. She looked up and huge banners being held up on sticks high above the crowd. The banners waved gently in the breeze. Addie began reading them aloud. Lincoln and Liberty, one people, one country. America, north and south, united again. 
This was the day she had been waiting for. It was not perfect. If it were, her brother and sister would be right there with her. This is the day she could imagine without them. She turned to Mom and Papa. I want to be I want today to be my birthday, Addie said. You picked one fine day for it, Papa replied. We'd like to go back home and have a party. The freezer I want is just waiting to make ice cream. As they made their way back home, Addie spotted some familiar faces in the crowd. Sarah and her parents. Addie rushed up to Sarah and threw her arms around her. I can't believe it, Sarah cried out. The war is really over. At last. Addie said, and guess what? She didn't give Sarah a chance to answer. I'm having my birthday right now and a party, and you and your mom and papa can come. Addie, laughed Sarah. You sh sure picked a good birthday. The 9th of April is a day nobody will forget. When Addie and Sarah's families arrived at the boarding house, every room was lit up. They went inside to find Mr. and Mrs. Golden, my dear, and the boarders talking in the dining room. Papa made his way through the room and shaking hands and hugging everyone. Then he hopped on a chair and made an announcement. Today is my daughter's 10th birthday and you all invited to a party right here in this dining room. I'm going to make a freezer full of ice cream. Everyone cheered and Mama said, Addie, you and Sarah stay out of the way until we get things set up for the party. Mama, can we go and jump rope till then? Yes, but stay on the side off right in front of the house, Mama said, and Papa started getting that ice cream. If you don't, we'll be having it for breakfast. Outside, Addie and Sarah took turns jumping a rope. Addie jumped better than she had before. Some people were coming back from the celebration joined in their game, jumping in and missing and then trying again. Two strangers offered to jump the rope for the girls so that Addie and Sarah could jump together. Other people stood by, clapping to the rhythm of their jumping. Listen to them ropes, Addie told them. They're singing out the rhythm. It didn't seem long before Mama came out to tell Addie and Sarah that the ice cream was ready and the party would be starting. The girls went inside. When Mama, when Addie entered the room, she gasped, Oh, Mama, it's so beautiful. When Mrs. Golden and Mama had set out the tables with pretty bowls and lavender glasses, there were shiny copper pictures of ginger pop. In the center of each table were flowers. Papa carried in the ice cream fees where he removed the paddle from the outside and began dishing out scoops of ice cream. Mrs. Golden brought in two cherry pies from the pie safe. I was saving these for tomorrow's dinner. Mrs. Golden said, but tonight is a real celebration for Addie and all of us. We'll have them now. M Mama led Addie to one table, and there, and there at her place was a tin of Ben candies from Madeer. Madeer handed her something else wrapped in tissue paper. You sure picked a special day for your birthday, said Madeer. This is from Sunny and me. Addie opened the gift to find two of Sunny's bright yellow feathers tied together in a bow. Addie held them greatly, a bit of bright sunshine in the palm of her hand. Thank you, Addie said. She pinned her feathers in her hair and kissed my dear. Let me, let me remind you to always let your spirit sing out. I will, promised Addie. I will. And that's the end of that story. The next one is Addie Saves the Day. So thanks for listening. Goodbye.